Bite my tongue? Never. See, what they don't know is, is, they're tuning in to DBYC Podcast, and I'm just discovering the world around me. Kaisha, I love you. Be like God is telling you to keep going. You quit on yourself, you really down bad. Tune in Wednesdays at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. What's up, everybody? Welcome to DBYT. I'm your host, Taisha, and today we have Laquan, and we will be talking about how we deal with our emotions on a day-to-day, a weekly, monthly, yearly basis. We obviously all go through hardships and frustrating times, and today we're here to talk about all of that and how we deal with it and what solutions we have for you guys and what advice we can grant to you guys to help you deal with your emotions hey laquan how you doing today hey (laughs) pretty pretty good you know this is a good day okay so what we're gonna jump straight into is how have you been feeling lately you know for the first part of the summer i don't know if it was because you know some of my friends graduated like all of a sudden i got hit with like some random I don't want to call it depression, but like some random sadness that came out of nowhere. And it's just like, it sat there and it lingered for maybe about like a month. And I was just like, I don't know what's happening. But um, I'm feeling better now. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I feel the, the, I didn't want to call it depression either. <laughs> it's, it's been happening a lot this semester. Like, it's been a lot of tears this year. I don't know. Maybe it's something in the water because like <laughs> that, that. <laughs> when I left, when I left out Austin and actually came, I was, you know, I was up here. I was happy, very much happy to be back in my own element. But it was like my mind has been battling me. Like it's just it's very much against me at this point. And I have ideas to why, but they're sad, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I get that. Like you, just, you're like okay. I should be happy. I'm like, like for you, for instance, I'm graduated from college, not new chapter in my life, and then like, and like for me, it's what is going on here. And I'm like, I feel like right now, I'm at a plateau, mm-hmm. and. I think that's why like nothing really exciting is happening nothing really bad is happening so it's just like I'm okay is what I feel but like all of a sudden like oh I'm not okay I feel sad and I don't I don't I don't I can't even really explain it that well it's just like when it comes it comes and then when I'll, I'll wake up someday and I'll be like oh Okay, not feeling horrible. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I think what's ha- what blah, blah, blah. I think what is happening is that a lot of things are interconnected right now, and it's like <laughs> one thing is happening. It's like, well, isn't this supposed to happen? And it it is not happening. It's like, wow, like what is going on? Like I. <clears throat> I think what's going on with me right now is the fact that my abandonment issues is playing into my detachment issues. So like, for example, when I graduated, there was things that I felt like should have been said, more so like a congratulations from some people that I didn't get. Not saying that I was disappointed I was more angry than anything because I had felt like I had accomplished such a a large milestone and though most of the time I downplay what is going on in my life but Mm. that moment even if I downplay it you shouldn't especially being who you are to me you shouldn't downplay it because that was that that's a huge deal you graduated college like right and I was I, hanging over the edge recording you. <laughs> oh my God. Look, it's our clip. <laughs> <laughs> and and that and that's 
like I really appreciate y'all like being there for me at, at that the, that time in my life because it's like where I met y'all like a year. <sighs> Wow, that a year ago. A, a year, year ago? ago? Oh my gosh. Like, I feel like I've known you for such a long time. And it's like, y'all could show up. So it's like, why can't X, Y, and Z show up for me at times like this? And I, I don't ask you to do anything else. And that's something simple. Um, and I think that lately I've been dealing with traumas uh, that I've had in my life. And now is leading me to detach more quickly and more harshly so it's mm. like where it would usually take me a little more time to be like oh I don't know if I want to let go or if I want to stay it's like you no know, debating in my mind mm-hmm. and I've had conversations with my family where I was like well if x y and z happen I don't know if I could handle it like parts of me feel that I'm getting tired in a way and it's getting real hard out here oh I hear your voice <laughs> 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 right, yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of issues right now so that's as transparent as I can be guys but anyways moving on to the next question what have uh, been some of the difficulties and challenges that you've been dealing with one one important one I think is not expressing my feelings. I am very much so like, let me hold it in. Let me hold it in. And just go on about my day. And that's not healthy. My boyfriend tells me that all the time. Like, if there's a problem, say something. And I'm like, I don't know if you want to hear what's going to come out my mouth, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as simple as people think it is because it's like just talk to me and it's like I don't even know where to start I don't know I and then I think a, a part comes where you don't want to be judged for what you're going to say next at least that's how I feel oh but expressing your feelings like do you feel, like where do you feel like the the block is to where you can't there, there was a time where I'd be like super petty about things, right? Mm-hmm. And I think there's me trying to correct those habits. So it's just like, you know, don't do it because it might lead to that. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just like, a shut, don't say anything. And because I don't know if it's going to come across as like, being me being spite or me being petty about the situation. So I much rather not go back to that. At the same time though, it's kind of like if you don't express yourself, you can't really like, you know, I don't know, be mentally sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like you develop like a metaphoric cloud mm-hmm. and you start to feel it. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, when, I know what, like, when did you start feeling like this? Like, is this like a recent development or is this how you always been? Like, how is that? I'll say, I'll say it's a recent development. And it, I think it probably, I feel like it, it may stem from family. Cause like, I know like, you know, family will come out of the blue sometimes and then say something and then boom, it's just like, I'm like, well, there, there goes my whole mood for like the rest of however long. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I feel you like there's some things that my family says to me and it makes me feel like they don't think that I'm capable of making like some type, like some decisions that I feel are best for me. Like they, they say slick things and I feel like it's in, it's in a way to make me be swayed the other direction. And it's like, sometimes I just get very irritated with it because I'm like, all right, I freaking get it. I get it. Like you don't, you don't want this to be this way or you don't want that that way. But 
it's not about you right now. You know what I mean? And it's like, uh, everybody doesn't know what's going on in your life, especially when you're like me and you, where we keep most of our traumas and accidents and like just emotions and everything else inward because yes. we don't I, I feel like me and you are one and the same we don't want to burden people with our problems and it's like even though people say that you wouldn't be doing it I can't help but to feel like I would be I can't help but feel that way I know what um what thing one thing about my family is and it's like I I feel obligated to like if like there's something I can do to help, I'm, I'm gonna help. But like there are things where it's, there are times where it's just like, do not put me in a situation that makes me feel like it's either in order to help you, I have to not help myself. And like I don't like that. Like that will ruin my whole mood. That will literally ruin my whole mood for like a month. Because not only now do I feel guilty for a, if I reject to help, like I feel horrible if I don't help. But then again, I feel horrible if I don't say no. Yeah. Like, it's like, cause you, like it's your family. Been with you whole life. But at the same time, like there's a point where, and I'm trying to like learn this now still like, yes, that's your family, but you, I'm trying to get into the part in my life where I'm starting my own family so I can't keep taking it out of my pot and putting it in my like my yes you're my Speak family on still, it. but like Speak on it. <laughs> I gotta start helping myself like that's the hard part like it's like at the end of the day you know I'm gonna be here for y'all regardless but at what point what age what time do I get to grow up Mm -hmm. and that's it's hard when it's like everybody wants to make decisions for you and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that they make every single decision for me because definitely like I've spoken about uh, previously we grew up in a household where we make majority of our decisions but as we're growing up and we're learning it's like I don't know if we're getting to a spot where it's like we we're kind of mad at ourselves because we wish we would have already been more established or mm -hmm. feel like more adult at this age or whatever. But it's like, it, do, it does get kind of frustrating sometimes when you're like, dang, like, can I just make a um, adult decision for myself sometimes without mm -hmm. having like repercussions of like all these different opinions on, oh, T, no, like that ain't it. Or, you know what I mean? Like, and it's not even just family. It, it comes in with the friends and everything. Like, mm -hmm. it's, I've gotten to a point where it's hard to even talk to some of my friends because it's like anything I say, they're mad at me and it's like dang like if we're falling up like if we're breaking away or we're growing apart just say that because at this point i'm not mm. even, i'm not even being ill-mannered towards you and you are like jumping on my throat or you getting overly yeah. emotional with me over nothing and i don't understand yeah. it i know also there comes a point where like you may reject the thing that they're trying to do and then they start guilt tripping you like <laughs> yep <laughs> like <laughs> oh. why don't you want to help all the things we've done for you or something like that I'm just like I get that yes but you are not ob you are not obligated to do this like ain't nobody force your hand ain't nobody tell you you had to so don't put me in a situation where it's like you're te you're asking me, but you're really telling, telling me. Telling me, yeah. I don't like when people do that either. I have to. I have so many talks with people when I'm like, if you want something, say that. Because I am a literal person. I don't care what. Like, if you say you want something, or if you're, if I know it's a question, but it's really meant to be a statement, I'm not taking it as a statement. I'm taking it at face value because say what you mean and mean what you say. Like, why are we going in circles mm -hmm. to get back to where we should have been? You know what I mean? I, I, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. I don't like that at all. No. Uh, I think another reason that might, like, kind of be guilt going into, like, this, like, you know, sad episode sometimes. I'm a busy person. You know this. Yes. I, I am always doing something. Can't sit still. 
And I think this summer, I have my plate is is either fully full or it's empty. And I think on those days where it's empty, it's just like, oh, what do I do? What do I do? I don't have, I don't have anything to do. And it's just like, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's like, I keep busy so I don't focus on anything negative or if I'm <laughs> like, I don't know. You know, I gotta ask you this. Are you running away from something? Cause that that is that is something that could be a it's a it's very much possible. Um, I like you am a busy person, and some like I I noticed this when I was a little bit younger. I stay so busy so I don't have to be stuck and alone with my mind. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it gets there. It's like, because if I'm not doing something, my mind goes to overthinking. It goes into overdrive. And I'm just like, I get sad. I get so sad. And I just be like, dang, like, I wish I could have done this differently. Or I wish I could have done this to help this. And it's like a bad a bad chain reaction. So why are you in my head? <laughs> I'm, just trying, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it, you know. Like, like that makes this sense. is real, that, bro. That makes a lot of sense. Cause like when you when you're like for instance, when we're not busy, all we are left with are our thoughts. And then you know, oh, thoughts just take control sometimes. It's just like, wow, I wish I would have done that differently three years ago for some like or like I wonder if I would have taken this course where would I be now like yeah oh my goodness like oh I I can I can see what you mean when like it's kind of like keeping away keeping busy keeping your mind full of things to do so your mind doesn't start telling you the things that you could have done. <laughs> yeah. Or it just, or like you start thinking about events or people or really anything. And my my alone mind doesn't usually go into happy moments. Um, um, it just, well, it doesn't. It doesn't ever go to the happy places. It always goes to the sad places or the dark places. And I try, like, I've been reading more, like I told you earlier, Year. and I'm trying to replace all my negative thoughts with positivity because it's like if I don't I'm a crack all right I can I can feel it like it's is it's not too many nights that go by where I don't just sit in the dark and start crying or if I don't just sit there and just stare at the wall and I get into like these deep stairs and it's so weird because like sometimes it's like an out of body experience where you can see yourself doing it but you don't really stop it because you're so deep in your thoughts and it's like this is a dark episode <laughs> <laughs> but I I think the reason like for real that we wanted to do this episode today is just to show like this is not not normal you know what I mean yeah. like a lot yeah. of people go through it and with us being aware of it like we know what mm. we're doing and mm. we I feel like we need to find better coping mechanisms and yeah. try to help the masses because we struggling out here and mm -hmm. especially when you feel like you are not getting anywhere in the time that you want to get there it's like dang I should have did this I should have did that da -da -da -da. Ooh. and it, it gets frustrating and it Mm -hmm. it, it could drive you down and drown you if you let it but we yeah to hopefully pump positivity and hope sure. <laughs> into what into what we all going through because especially living in this time boy the comparisons it's tough mm. it's tough yes so yes speaking of coping mechanisms what do you do to cope when everything is going through your mind I know what helps me the most. Take a bath. Take a hot, a hot bath. Put some Epsom salt in there. <laughs> a little melatonin. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, like, turn off the lights, like some candles, and just sit in there. And just like, I just soak. I just soak for maybe like 
I was sitting in the tub for two hours. <laughs> Listen to music. I fell asleep in the tub. Nah, I'm too scared oh. of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nah, I'm too scared. My oh, best okay. round and dry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, look, look. Caught, caught. <laughs> well, I'm weird by myself. Uh, nah, and I'm okay with that. Okay, you a bubble bath type of person. Light the candles, got the music going. That sounds very romantic. Like he said, I love myself. <laughs> I, am in love. I am in love with myself. Yes. <laughs> that is great, though. That is awesome. Because, boy, you don't love yourself, nobody will. That's rule number one. Rule number one. I have a question. Okay. Do you think being bored can lead to like these little sad episodes? being bored yeah like you i don't know like you have nothing to do so it's just like it just oh uh, i don't that kind of goes into like filling up your time so like you have nothing to do do you think it could just like lead to those episodes creeping in out of nowhere uh i feel like it is very much similar to when you've completed all your tasks and you feel mm-hmm. like you don't have anything to do if you're bored oh my gosh yeah because either you finna do something unproductive then you're gonna feel like s-h-i-t when <laughs> it's like so, so okay for example say say you're bored you're watching tv and you're like man i could be educating myself or i could be doing this i could i be could be working out <laughs> you know it's like you you're t- you're so tough on yourself that you're not giving yourself enough credit and i know I, oh my gosh i know i say a lot of things a lot but there has been so many times like even when i was graduating this year i wasn't excited until it came mm-hmm like the day of like even at graduation I was like bro they need to get on with this because I'm ready to go (laughs) you know and like I I don't like to brag on things but I do want to put in while it's on my mind they disrespected me so bad at graduation it doesn't even make any sense first of all let me tell you how they butchered my name yeah that was disrespectful and then secondly how I did graduate cum laude I, I thought so. I did I too. So. They guys, they didn't have my name in the program, bro. I they was didn't. like, I was like, hold on, no, no, no. I know my sister been making the grades, like. I met, bro. I made. I even got all. I got all A's this whole so, um this whole semester, last semester, the semester before that, the semester before that. Like I've been making the grades, baby. You feel me? And they they straight up didn't put it in the book they didn't say it when they called my name when they mispronounced it but when I got my uh diploma it was definitely on there and I was like you don't say I was like that was kind of disrespectful but because that that also had me in a a rut after graduation I was like I was like how did I not graduate cum laude at least <laughs> I'm like I know I wasn't magna cum laude or sum cum laude I knew I wasn't because I had some uh uh-ohs in my college years but I was like this is this is not what I thought this was (laughs) and and like you worked so hard to go and and get the graduation for your recognition yeah don't get that recognition don't get recognized and then um because I already knew I was getting a plaque well I didn't know I was getting a plaque I knew I was getting an award I got an award for overall excellence in my um in my field <laughs> not just academic excellence I'm just excellent <laughs> overall <laughs> I took that as I was the best in my field but you know whatever we ain't gonna talk about that whatever <laughs> but got off the state y'all wrong for that I just want y'all to know so if y'all mm-hmm. listening y'all are wrong for that but I'm glad y'all got it right on where where it mattered if I had to have it printed on the booklet or on my uh on my diploma nah yeah we gonna get it on there that's cool I'm okay with that but <laughs> sorry to get all off topic but I had to I had to make sure I said that um <laughs> Laquan personally do you have anybody that you go to that you can vent to or uh that can give you any sound advice that you would actually like take um I say like very close friends, like you, for instance, I'll go to you sometimes if like, I need like a little, am I being crazy or not kind of episode? (laughs) Or just like, just like some advice. 
And um and yeah, I, it's primarily friends. Close, very close friends. Cause I'm not just gonna go to anybody, like cause some people will tell you something just just to tell you something. Like I need some people who have like some common sense as a key factor. <laughs> now let me ask you this. <laughs> How do you know that the advice that is being given to you is good advice? How do you know? I mean, it just comes down to, I'll say it comes down to two things. How much I trust this person, not okay. to try to steer me in the wrong direction. And like how I feel after I receive the advice. Like, for instance, I've texted you several times. Like, am I being, am I overreacting? Mm-hmm. And I know, you, like you said, you are a very literal person. So you gonna tell me straight up, like that's a little, that's a little much. <laughs> You're being a lot right now, or you are very much so to feel this way and feel however you feel, and like that's what I kind of look for. Like there needs to be a balance. Yeah, I'll say there needs to be a balance of like you gonna call me out when I am being off the walls, but you gonna let me know where like yes. You do have the right to feel this way. Now, the thing about taking advice Mm -hmm. is I look at people and I'm like, would you take your own advice? That is a very key part too, yes. If you're not going to take your advice, I am definitely not taking it. That's like, okay, for example, example, uh, if you don't have what I'm asking for, Mm -hmm. I'm not taking your advice. Let me tell you why. Have you ever been in a predicament where you and you, you're in a relationship and you go to your single friend who literally has zero relationship experience, but they are talking to you like the relationship guru? I don't talk to them people. I can't talk to them. I can't talk to them. They gonna make me... What we gonna talk about? <laughs> so you and you've been dating air? <laughs> <laughs> You've been dating air clearly because I didn't know about that. Baby, you're not <laughs> you single by choice. That. You're single by force. Don't play with me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they be the main. Hold on, they be the main. We done talked about this before. They be the main ones <laughs> trying to go, tell the gospel about your relationship. Yep. <laughs> he ain't no good. Preach, preacher. No. Hold on. Wait a second. Hold on. Wait. You don't say the this. And they'll say the same thing over and over and over again about every person you be with. Because I think the main issue is, the main issue is, they don't want to see you Come on. in a relationship unless they are in a relationship. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on with it. Bro, when I tell you people are so, they're so jealous. And it's so, that's another sad thing because... With this jealousy that I've experienced in my life, like from other people that I actually cared about, it that also runs across my mind from di- sometimes, um, just because you you trust people to have you, you know the best interest for you at heart, but really, as long as they're comfortable and as long as they're on top, that's when it matters, and that's what I had to really learn that because it was like. Everybody is not looking out for you the way you're looking out for them. You could have the best intentions for you and everybody around you, but you have that bad apple that you don't know is a bad apple around you. You keep being pulled down, and you like, why am I being pulled down? Well, they're an anchor. Yes. They're they, that's what they're going to yes. do. So. And it can, that, some, it can sometimes be family too. Oh, definitely. Those anchors, those anchors can sometimes be family because I know, like, I've cut off some family members because, like, they. They never wanted to praise me when I was doing good, but they were always the first one to say something when I mess up. Like, that's that, that just hurt me. And like, that also plays on like your mental spirit as well. Like, like they always hit you with a, oh, you should have done better than that. Oh, well, you know, your cousin did the same thing. They did excellent. Why can't you do that? Like, I, no. That like, is disgusting. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like the the thing about the recent the recent congratulations or whatever. I have people on um, on different platforms being like, "Oh yeah, congratulations, master degree." <laughs> Excuse why me. Why can't you just be happy? 
be happy for what I have accomplished thus far. Like, I've been in school since I was like three years old. Please get off my nuts. Because at this point, are you going to pay for my master's degree? Are you going to provide housing? Are you going to do any of that? Are you going to pay off my previous debt? Mm-hmm. Shut up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shut up. Please. All I need is a congratulations. Unless you're moving. You're not paying for it, so why does it even matter to you? Like Exactly. Like, if you really wanted to help, why you didn't send a graduation gift? Hmm? Why didn't you send no money? That's what I'm really saying. <laughs> 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 That's what, like... You talking all this junk as if this stuff is free. I Yes, I am very much uh, enticed in my education. Now, the way you get educated, that is what I'm against. The The mm-hmm. fact that we have to pay all, we have to get in debt before we do anything. And that is and that, sad. That also weighs on us to like, yeah, I'm in college. I got this degree. I got this piece of paper that allows me to have a job. And that thing big. Too. But yeah. But like, I, I have to pay so much money. Like there are literally times where I'm just like, oh my God, why am I even in college? Yeah. Trust me, I completely understand. But by the time I, I got to that point where I was like, yo, I don't know about this. It's too late to turn mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. Uh, got to see it through, my boy. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm just like, it's like, oh. Uh, they always tell you go to college, go to college. They don't tell you college is gonna cost you an arm, a leg, a mortgage. Bruh. This is your first mortgage. This is the first mortgage. This is the. F- they don't even like, especially like me. I was first gen. Well, to, in a, and I think I was first gen. Like people in my family have went, but not in my household. I don't know how first gen works. But mm. <laughs> I didn't have anybody to show me the ropes of college or how to get finances. So it was like everything was new to me so if I got it it was like oh cool but if I didn't it's like well dang how do I get more it's like I don't know who to go to who to talk to I don't I didn't know anything if I could redo that last part of high school over again or at least to up to sophomore year and up I would make different choices as to who to talk to or where to go if I know what I know now I would I wouldn't have paid for college. I graduated number eight in my class, bro. Why was my college not paid for? That don't make sense to me. That part. That That doesn't make any sense to me. That part. Another thing is, I wish people would be more open about other avenues other than college. Like, if I got my real estate license right now, if I got it right now, if I just took some real estate classes, I could be making so much money. You and know like, that's, that's where most of the millionaire uh, millionaires are coming from too. They're buying that's up what makes land me mad. and they're they're doing it. They doing it. And that's what makes me that's what makes me mad. The thing about it is then once they put property down and everything, they charge these outrageous wages mm. and the fact that most of these jobs suck they suck and you can't survive off them and you can't you can't buy what these people are selling and it's like mm-hmm. well if you don't you're homeless and if you don't get a job now you're broke and homeless and what's worse <laughs> than being broken homeless like it's it's a it's very much it's a lot it's all it seems like it's always a game of catch up like yeah you if you get left behind it's gonna be a long way to get back on board. Like, I've seen it to where, and I don't wanna make this about like finances or anything, but like mm-hmm. this episode about it, but like I've seen it to where like somebody has lost their job, their family loses their house, and then by that point, they get a new, let's say they get a new job. Mm-hmm. The housing market has went up so far that now they can't buy a house. So now they're constantly renting. And when you're renting, you can't, you have to like take a house. Houses aren't cheap anymore, first of all. They're not. And the like, rent is basically, you might as well buy. Well, buy, exactly. But then again, the bank goes and they look at your credit and they're like, oh, you lost your house. So we don't really trust you to even take out a mortgage. So it's just like, 
again, it, it makes it so much harder to catch up when you get left behind. Yeah. And, <laughs> That mm, that also goes into a stress of like I don't want to I know we talk about dating a lot but that also goes into the type of person that you choose to be with like because of the fact that it's not is and I'm not gonna say it's about the money but it's not not about the money either because yes you can find you a genuine person but if they broke how are they gonna help you? I, okay, you. I'm gonna. There, there was a quote from Marilyn Monroe. Um, you, you said this yeah. before. Um, it's like a. It's a. It's, it's a bonus. It's a plus. Yeah, yeah. She said. She said. Uh, a, a, a man looking for a pretty girl doesn't mean that's all he's looking for, but it sure does help. Yep. It's like you look looking for a rich partner isn't maybe what all you're looking for. But my God, doesn't it help? My, it's like, oh, you got money, you got a good credit score, you and you respect- and like, don't nobody, don't <laughs> nobody want to struggle. Like, I, I don't want to go backwards. I don't. Mm-hmm. So it's like mm-hmm. to to go from where I'm used to at least being able to budget and do everything like that throughout my life. I don't want to have to be like, oh yeah, we're going to live paycheck to paycheck. I don't want to live like no. that. No. No. That's that's probably one of my worst fears. And I've never, I've, when I tell you, I've never had to come home when the lights was off. Never had that. I never had not, I never not had something that wasn't on. We, we was always in constant rotation. There was never a time when we didn't have food for it. Like, yeah, sometimes, you know, you go in the pantry, you like noodles again. Dang. But, <laughs> but it's never been a time where we just completely hungry and we just like starving. It was never that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So taking all of this, how do we plan to develop into the, our new selves? I feel like the most key thing is if you feel something, express it. And I know I just said that and I'm still working on it. But like, you got to express how you feel because A, people can't read minds. Oh my gosh. People cannot read minds. And B, it's not going to do you any better to keep it inside. If anything, it's going to make you more frustrated, more upset, more angry, more sad. So I... I have been trying to get better. Like, if I feel like something's wrong, I'm going to say it. But it's hard. And yes, it is hard because you you don't, like you said earlier, you don't want to come off as a burden. You know, I don't want to come off as rude or petty. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, express, just express yourself. And if a person really cares about you, they're going to, A, listen. They're going to listen. Listen. They, listen is the key part. <laughs> listen is the key part. <laughs> some of y'all don't be hearing us for real. Like, we're literally giving y'all gold right now. And then I say, and I know it's hard not to judge, but try not to be as judgmental when somebody's trying to openly express themselves to you. Like, because that it takes a lot it actually takes a lot to express yourself to somebody like be vulnerable because like I, I know for like me and you for instance we're tough people yeah. so we don't want to come off as like oh like listen Still- to me <laughs> listen to me <laughs> yeah but like so like like uh, like we for us to express ourselves it takes a lot of effort i'm glad you said it i do want to comment on two things you said people aren't mind readers definitely um with with me being kind of weird when it comes to like asking people to do things or asking like Oh, well, if you want to come over, it's no pressure. Like, I say that in a, I make it seem like they're going to say no before they say no, because I hate this. Mm-hmm. Thing. I hate rejection. Uh, yeah. As a lot of people do. So I try to cover myself with this blanket of they're going to say no. And I, <laughs> I've i been like that for a long time. And, like, I have my one of my friends, he'd be like, like, I beat around the bush with him. 
Because I'd be like, all right, so do you like to do X, Y, and Z? <laughs> He'd be like, bro, ask what you really want to ask. And I'll be like, this is so hard. <laughs> I'm like, I just don't want you to say no. But I also... I really want you to say yes without me saying, like, you know, having to be like, can you just say yes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I get you. Cause like my, my boyfriend, he'll be like, he'll see, he'll see something is wrong. He'll ask me, what's wrong? Are you okay? And then my stubborn self is like, I'm fine. The tone fine, the tone and fine didn't even sound fine. <laughs> like, are you so lying just like, or are you? <laughs> and it's just like like I said earlier I don't want to come off as vulnerable and this is my boyfriend that I'm talking about so like <laughs> I feel you man I, I feel you I also wanted to the second point I want to get into was when you're going to somebody to express yourself please know who you are going to to express okay. yourself because for example, if I say I'm that's not what I'm here for, that's what I mean. If I know I cannot give you the the support that you need and I'm letting you know up front that I cannot do that, I cannot be that person for you, don't come to me. Find you another outlet because sometimes what people don't understand is that we're going through things too. Just because we're not running to you at every single chance that we get does not mean we're not going through anything. And that's that's real, bro. I, as as a child and being the most, I don't care, being the most mature person in my friend group, that was hard. I had to be the strongest person always. There was nothing that my friends couldn't come to me about. Would I go to them for my, my stuff? No, Absolutely no, no. Not. No, no. I have years and in books and books of me writing to myself. I was just about to say, I was just about to say, I know, I feel it because in those situations, the only person you will go to is yourself. Yep. Is I feel like we live the same childhood because it's like my friends come to me about advice about each other. Like, and then me, I'm like, okay, so I'm the strong one. Mm-hmm. I am the one that seems the most mentally okay. Mm-hmm. And it causes you to take on that role to a point where it's just like, well, they already got their own issues going on. So let me not even put me whatever is going on, what is ever going on with me on them. So let me just, you know, like you said, write it down or let me just repress it. And yo, oh, I, I, that's one thing I hate. That's one thing I hate. Cause I've been told on multiple occasions, like, oh, nothing ever seems to go wrong with you. You always seem like you handle everything fine. And I'm like, I will punch you in your face right now if you said that. <laughs> and, and the crazy thing is the is the fact that when you show people how strong you are, they never forget that. And they yeah. take that and sometimes they abuse that. And like you say, they think nothing is ever wrong with you. No, Sally. I am very sad inside. I am very angry at the world, mm -hmm. but I can't show you that. Because if I show you that, you lose hope. You lose your sense of self due to the fact that I feel like I'm losing it. And if you're looking at me like, well, if she's doing that, I'm about to crumble because she's so strong. And if she is giving up, I have no, I have Say no- it again. Say it again. And people, do, bro, people do not understand that. They that, don't. That, and for 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 the people who are labeled the strong ones, that is the most stressful thing to know that your mental state can completely and physically alter someone's life. Like if you break down right now in front of that person, they they who knows what might happen. I, oh my gosh. I was just telling one of my friends, I was like, uh, how I broke down in high school after having a conversation with somebody that was close to me. And like, this was early in the morning. We, I get up, like the day before, I was talking to on the phone with this person and I'm yelling, I'm screaming, I'm mad, you know, I'm upset. I go to bed crying, wake up, I get on the bus and I'm quiet. I don't never quiet. I'm always talking, <laughs> you know what I mean? So 
everybody everybody picking up a vibe that I was putting down and they was like what's wrong with her what, what's wrong with you I'm like nah, chilling. just chilling tired lying through my teeth but I was gonna do it because I'm not finna do that Walk, we get off uh, at the little bus route or whatever, going to the school. I'm walking through the hallways. I'm like, okay, okay, right? You get, we get to our, our normal spot. We meet up with all our friends, so, 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 da, 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 da. And then there's me. I'm like, you know. And then next thing you know, I kind of just like got frustrated. I put my head on, my hand on my head and just started just like, you know, just, it's a one person. Are you okay? Oh, oh. oh. I know. Bro, down know. right there. In, in the freaking commons area, everybody looking at me, and I'm throwing the biggest temper tantrum in the world. I was like, why am I here? Why did he bring me here? I hate that I'm alive. I, well, I was going crazy. Then I fell to the floor. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I fell to the floor. And then my friend, she came, she was like, it's okay, it's okay, trying to come for me and everything. That, what, like, looking back at it, I should have got it in me. <laughs> but that, that was a growth point in my life that sometimes it's okay because after, after years of holding things in, you, you get tired and mm-hmm. people do not understand the struggles and the weight that you put on them, the expectation, being the smart one. Yep. Uh, being the pretty one. Huh. Lord, being the athletic one? Well, I wasn't athletic. Yep. I wasn't athletic all the way, but I was like, group? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. being being that person, being the one, academics, crazy. I went crazy on the academic side. Being being the social one. Oh my gosh. Being yes. the social one. Can you go talk to them for me? <laughs> being the one that everybody's attracted to. Like I ha- I I'm not bragging. I don't like bragging. But I have a spirit so genuine it doesn't make any sense. People gravitate towards me because they feel like they can trust me. They feel like I won't judge them because I won't. Like, yeah, everybody judge everybody. But when it comes to like something for real, for real, like I'm not finna judge you on your life choices or anything or mm-hmm. how you like for mm-hmm. real move. Unless you move and kind of grimy, I'm gonna talk about you. I mean, that's mm-hmm. <laughs> if if you're not causing no harm to me, I'm not finna talk down on you for real. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's <sighs> it's crazy. Let's just say that's crazy because it's 12:36 at night. <laughs> <laughs> this conversation was very much needed. I feel like, guys, if you need somebody, find you find you somebody or find you something that you can express yourself efficiently with. My my go-to is writing. I may even go start doing self-podcasts. I don't know, just recording myself. Mm-hmm. Just to listen back one of these days, but you just gotta find where you where you fit in and find an outlet. Definitely find your happy place. Yeah, because for me, it's for me, I think like I always get you ever get asked a question like, would you rather be blind or deaf? I much rather be blind because music, music to me is such a helpful thing. Like trying to like break down my emotions, trying to like calm myself down. And, like I could, I don't feel like I could live, I couldn't live without music. I couldn't, I couldn't. That is a good question. Cause like, I, I do like to see things. But I also like to hear people's voices too. And I guess if I couldn't see Chris Brown in real life, I might as well be able to hear his voice. Anyway. <laughs> You're stupid. I know, I can't help it. I no. can't. That's my man. No, 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 no. Y'all don't know. <laughs> Y'all don't know. <laughs> I always I always find a way to bring it back to him. <laughs> Bring it she's back. She's just waiting. Her. She's just waiting. She's just waiting I'm on the opportunity. Boy, I'm gonna meet him. <laughs> when oh, I got geez. so excited yesterday, last night he had put a post on um, Instagram, and it was like tours. Boy, I clicked on that thing too quick, but it wasn't. It wasn't no tour dates. It was her. What the? Where am I from? <laughs> I'm from <laughs> That's gross. Not gross, but you know, gross. shout out to my DC people. 
anyways. <laughs> I can't stand it. Stand down. All right, everybody. So uh, thank you for tuning in to listen to our very sad talk. I hope that you learned yes. something and have a um, you know a good takeaway from it. I hope that it helped you in whatever way. Uh, but yeah, that's all we got to say with the sad stuff. I mean, unless no. the quant, you, you good on your side? I just say, I just like, just express yourself some way, somehow. Definitely. Self-expression yeah. is the best expression. Because, I mean, that's, it's you. It's all about you. Ain't about mm-hmm. nobody else. You yeah. can be as selfish as you want to. So, take advantage of being able to do that especially if you don't have no you know nobody you can go to for real find that um outlet and make it work mm-hmm. but yeah. we Five gotta that. go yeah. cause this the end of the show yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, it's, for real. It's 1240, it y'all. Really it's 1240, okay. y'all. Yeah, okay. So, from me to you, this was DBYC Productions, and we out. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>